Okay, tuck all those wires in afterwards. Make sure our rubber gasket didn't get trapped underneath. Free, free. Now, see, I've trapped it underneath, so let's take that out. Pull that up. Put that back down. I'm just going to set this aside for now. <clears throat> so, so, we got our receiver, our old receiver box, our old servo, servo horn screw. Now, for the BEC, let's just put those aside there so you see what you get. For the BEC, of course, you get your instructions. They're fairly straightforward in point form and picture form. So they're in uh, French and English. So instructions. There's a new receiver box cover because the BEC wires now root out through the top of here and not through the main uh, cable feed. There's a new o-ring so if you damage the existing o-ring from the receiver box you got that. There is the, B the BEC and uh, I'll show you here there's the little uh, receiver plug that goes into your receiver to feed power and your ESC comes in and fits in there to uh, to send your pass through your ESC signals, but inside there must be a a, a break, a cutoff that will disconnect the e, the BEC power from your ESC, and then feed the BEC power from this unit into your receiver and your power cord that goes through to your little uh, power extension. Um, <clears throat> there is a piece of foam that I already installed here. It's a little L-shaped piece of foam. You can see it there. And on the bottom of the BEC, there is a shiny um, footprint where you it shows you where exactly to stick the foam. So I've already stuck that on. And then you have a Y cable so that over here on your ESC where you've got this extra power extension, if you have alternate accessories, you can stick the Y in and wire in. For that, we don't need today, but it's there. They provide a uh, tie wrap and your uh, new box cover cable clamp top for the BEC. There is another piece of foam there that I have already stuck on and it just fits right in a little uh, recess in the cover so you know where it's to stick that. It's pretty straightforward. You have two new screws for the receiver cover and some silicone grease to re-grease everything on your gaskets to keep them watertight. So now to fit the uh, <coughs> fit the BEC, I said remove your receiver cover which we have done already. Keep the screws, you will need the screws. Uh, next it says peel the L-shaped foam. So we've done that, we've peeled the L-shaped foam, we've stuck it on there and Secure it to the smooth surface portion of the bottom of the BEC. Pretty straightforward and clear. Uh, remove the backing side from the other foam pad and install the BEC, install the BEC, BEC onto the receiver as shown. So the other backing piece, which has already been removed. If we get in close here, you can see there's the TSM port, the link port, and there's that channel that, that cut out there. That just sits right over top of that port. So right in there, just kind of sticks down like this, like so. And it says, uh, install the new O-ring on the receiver box. Ensure the O-ring is properly seated in the groove. So this is what I forgot to do when I tried this the first time. I wasn't reading through the instructions properly. Is you have to root that over top of that cable loop it over all your uh, servo lines and your antenna right in your your uh, sorry all these uh, all the port wires for your receiver and seat that into the groove and it sits pretty nicely in there so it doesn't fall out 
fairly easily. There we go. Route the BEC power wire through the new receiver box cover. So the new receiver box cover you have is here and just route it through. Uh, and just be careful, there is a heat shrink there. I think that in there and then inside the heat shrink is probably a, um, I don't know if it's a resettable fuse or just a little inline uh, component fuse, but there is something in there. Um, sometimes it's a little hard to get through the box there, so just be careful, don't, uh, don't tear it and pull it, yank it through. So we've got that routed through. Now it says, loosen the screws to the battery tray, lift the battery tray, and route the BC underneath the battery tray and over to the electronic speed control. See wiring diagram. So, we have here, move our battery stay. Here there's two screws. We remove those. And this just gains access through to the ESC. And also there is a tie wrap underneath <clears throat> that is holding the ESC wires and shift servo wires in place. So take those and place them out. And that we can just simply lift it. It'll pivot on the back screws, lift in place. We can see down in there, see if I can get some extra light there. You see down in there, there's some wires held by a, um, Tie wrap, what we'll do is carefully clip those without clipping the wires. There we go. Pop that old one out, kick it to the floor. And then we route this cable as flatly as possible. So we get all the twists and kinks out of it. So it's gonna come out like that. And it's going to have to come out, down, through between the two uh, servos. Now, I don't think there was enough room. There was a little catch there. There's not enough room to feed the, uh, the JST plug through the little catch for the cables. So I'm going to just put an added an extra tie wrap in there afterwards. But route the cable through and pop it through on this side of the ESC. And then take the spare cable tie that they provided and slip it through the access, the little loop hole on, on the transmission. Get all your wires together and tighten that down. And try and keep them as flat as possible. That way you don't trap them between the screw holes and that capture. There is there is considerable amount of space, so that it doesn't uh, doesn't get in the way too much. But you just have to have that down. Just make sure that if you put the box down there, that you've got enough cable on this side that comes down, and you can tuck it down neatly and tie wrap it into everything else without getting in the way of the shift servos. If you don't leave enough and you tie it tight. You could have your cable running right across where the shift servos are for the um, for the differentials. So just make sure you've got enough that you can loop it around, bring it down and neatly tie it in place. And on the other side, it will root around. So now that we've got that tightened up, carefully trim off the tab as flush as possible so you don't have a sharp edge on it. And then you can stick that down and press it down and just do a check that you're on the uh, screw boss mounts and you're not pushing down against the cable and then put your two flathead screws back in one and there's the other one second flathead screw there it is. Two. I'm just gonna move my light up and out of the way. Here's the other one. Make sure that cable is not pinched. Snug. 
snug. Okay, now we've got this cable. So let's go back to the instructions. So we've got that far, that far. Now they want us to tuck the cable in around and through. So remove existing zip tie, then use included zip tie to the transmission housing. Note, ensure that no wires are pinched before we tighten the screws. The battery tray, loosen the screws to the ESC and route the BC power wire behind and under the ESC C diagram, retighten the screws, plug the red female connector, the BC, to the red male connector on the ESC. Note, use the Y harness if other accessories are already supplied, are already plugged into that plug. So we'll move this around. <coughs> So here we have our BEC wire, and they just wanted to tuck it around all the extra wires here, but it's kind of the shift mechanism kind of gets in the way, so they just want you to loosen this off. And loosen that one off. free, take your wire, tuck it down in behind. I'm just gonna weave it back and forth a couple of times so that it gets tucked away and only just a little tag comes out. Make sure it's clear of the shift mechanism and put our screws back together. Just, I'm just going to tighten it up just a little bit, just so I know that the screw holes are in the right spot. There's one. There's the other one. And then just take this and plug it back in there. So what I did behind here is I just kind of went loop one, two, three loops, and that keeps that that. Uh, um, little fuse or heat shrunk part in there. It's kind of the right length that just goes back and forth, keeps this nice and short so it doesn't dangle all over your chassis. Make sure your shift mechanism is clear, which it is, and tighten that back up. One, and see what screw is. Two. So that is nicely tucked away there. It's not gonna get in the way. It's not in the way of the shift mechanism for the two speed. It's all tucked away here. I've got ample cable loom there. So now working on this side again. <coughs> okay, we've loosened the screws, done the ESC part, plug the, unplug the ESC connector from channel two of the receiver, plug the connector into the BEC. So we take our Thing, we locate channel two. We've got channel one, channel one, channel two. Let's just make sure we got that right. Channel two is there, yes. So it's this plug here, which is actually the third port up. We take that out, sneak it through there, and plug it in there. And it is keyed, so you can't get it wrong. So that is the, this is now the signal wire to the ESC, so it's coming through here, it comes into the BEC, it's got the bypass cutoff, and this little tag in, root through, and plug it back into your receiver. Just like that. And there you go, it's electrically installed. Now we just have to tuck in all the wires. All right. Uh, plug the black connector from the VEC into channel 2 of the receiver, which we just did. Uh, install the remaining foam pad on the receiver box and wire clamp, so which I had done prior. There. Now they say add some silicone grease. Add some silicone grease to the foam pad. So we just put a bead of silicone grease there. That'll all smoosh down. And install the receiver box cover. Okay, well, I'm going to put the receiver box cover on first. And make sure my antenna is tucked in there and all the wires are tucked in. Seats down nicely. Okay, and there's screws that I had saved from 
the other receiver cover. Let's pop those in place. Get them started. Now try not to get them cross threaded. You know, start them lightly or back it out first a little bit. And then start them in. And that should get them threaded. Back out. Thread in. And that will get them threaded in on the same threads as the old uh, receiver box screws. Or when you took that out. So back it out a bit. And then start it back in. That way you don't get double threads into the uh, thing and weaken the uh, threads. And they don't have to be super tight. You've got that O-ring in there. So that's protecting your electronics. Just get them snug. There we go. Snug. 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 Then we take our BEC wire and our new uh, box cover clamp. Stick it on there. And try not to squish it around and swish it around too much. You don't want to displace that silicone. You just want to have it sort of wrap around the wires, get in between the wires and stuff like that. But you don't want to like spread it thin to the point where it's not, uh, it's not sort of conforming around the wires. My hands out of the way. So snug and snug. So that should be snug. That's snug. That's in place. So what do we have left over? We have the screw horn to do, the old receiver box cover, the old thing. So that is that. So what I'm going to do probably in here is just take another tie wrap from my shop supplies and just tie wrap down in there. Keep that wire just tucked away from the two uh, differential shift servos. And the next step is we will power up the system and uh, <clears throat> align the servo. So do I have a battery here? Yes. I don't have batteries in my remote. So let me take a pause. I'm going to fire up the batteries and that will come right back. All right. Sorry for the delay. I had to find some batteries for my uh, transmitter and battery here. I've got the 5,000 milliamp hour 3S battery. Uh, just when you're strapping it down, just make sure that you've got the 26 millimeter side and not the 23 millimeter side, so you flip it around. There's a battery in there. <clears throat> so what I was doing is installing, I had the servo installed, but now I want to make sure that the servo is zeroed. So you get power onto it. So you can hear the servo. Let's see. Yeah, forward, double tap reverse. I'm going to change the crawler reverse. Shift servos are working. Yep. So that's that. Now we got to put our servo horn on. So we'll flip this over. Let's see it in there. Make sure I've got zero trim set up on my transmitter. Zero trim. Centered. Take the uh, servo horn off the old servo. So we're ready. Pull the servo horn off. There we go. And let's take a little bit of more blue. Blue Loctite. I like using Threadlocker 243 because it's oil impervious. It will set even if you've got grease and oil on your threads. If I have any left. There, I've got enough there to get a drop on it. So set that down. Now let's take a pair of pliers. Because it's kind of wiggly in there. Let's see if I can get this in there. Tuck down. In there and oh my pliers aren't quite long enough. Let's try this way. Let's try going in that way. Back in there. Oh, that's upside down. There we go. And get my finger in there. 
sorry if you can't see this, but I want to set it so that it is pretty much zero. There we go. So the server horn is pretty much zeroed. And if we get the screw in here, and tuck it down into there. I don't think I can get it here. I might need a ball end. So let's get a ball end in there. I could do this out of the truck as well. Um, Ball ends are great, but don't over torque them or they'll snap. There we go. We got Loctite on there. We're zeroed. Now we take our steering link, grab our long screw that we removed, get some more thread locker on there. And like I like to do is I like to take that blob and just take my fingers and roll it so that it actually goes into all the threads and doesn't leave a big blob on the outside and then wipe my hand on something because it is a cyanoacrylate base you don't want to get this in your eyes and stuff like that put the screw onto the drag link and screw it in place Tight. There we go. So now we have our new uh, Traxxas 2255 400 ounce servo installed. We have our new BEC installed with the new cover rooted through, plugged in. So now we've got good torquey torquey. So now we get to go hit the trails. So, anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Um, and uh, pop this back on here. And this is this is one of the nicest things about the new uh, the new Bronco. Just set it in place and pop, pop. Body's on. No pins. No nothing. Nothing ugly sticking out of the hood or the back of the thing. It's nice and sleek. Looks real good and holds on solid. So, anyways, uh, ciao for now. Thanks for watching.